Welcome guys. Welcome to 15 step by step instructions to configure and run mobile automation test cases using Appium. So in this section we will complete all the installation which you need to run your mobile automation test cases. Right. So you know what's the most challenging part in learning Appium? The setup. Okay. So once setup is neatly done without any errors you are almost there okay the rest is very easy because it's not easy to run uh, if you see a web automation tools like Serenium it's you just need a browser to run but to run mobile automation test cases you need a lot of infrastructure but I made that very easy in my 15 step by step instructions so if you follow my lectures carefully and just follow with me then you can neatly complete your installation okay so it's not a big deal so that's why I charted down into an word document so that if you misses any of my lecture or saying you can just go through the word document and complete the installation okay so let's start it step one download Java okay so first let's go through it before we actually do it you know blindly let's see First of all, to run your mobile test cases, you need some Android device, right? So physically, you, you can get have a real device, you can plug into your system and test the app in your real device. So apart from that, there is a virtual device where you can run tests in the emulator. Okay, it's just like an Android mobile, but that will be available as a browser in your mobile, in your laptop. Okay, so if you want to run your test cases, web test cases using Selenium, you do that in browser, right? In the similar fashion, there is one mobile emulator for sample available in Android SDK. Okay, so if you download the Android SDK, you will get that mobile emulator sample. So you can run tests in that emulator. It's just like, you know, running on real device. So for that reason, and also, to support that Android platform and everything you need to download Android SDK or Android Studio it comes as complete Android Studio from their official site okay so once that is done and Android infrastructure is ready now you need Appium to test you know that Android apps for that you need to download node.js because Appium comes as a node module. So I'll explain you what is node.js when we are talking about that specific lecture. Okay, you will make sure you set up node.js in your machine and thereafter you will download Appium server client which is necessary to run the test. Okay, once everything is ready, what else you need? You need an editor to write your code. Okay, you have an Appium jar to test in mobile. You also have virtual mobile. At the same time, you also need to have an editor to write your code and that happens here with Eclipse installation. Okay, you will install Eclipse and configure the Appium jars and then finally you start the Appium server and write your test cases. Okay, that's what I said. All set, go at this point once you are done with the 15th lecture. So 15th point, right? So to make it happen all this, first of all, you need Java in your machine because underlyingly all the softwares need a Java, right? If you don't have that and this doesn't work, somewhere you will come across the problem. So better let's start with downloading Java first, just to make sure everything runs as expected. So I hope you already have Java. If not, just go and say JDK download. It's better to have entire JDK, not only JRE. So, okay, go to their official website, oracle.com, and here uh, you need to say JDK download, right? So, click on JDK download. Yeah. So, if you are working on Windows 64 bit, you can select this. If it is 32 bit, then this. If you are working on Mac OS, then you can select this okay just accept the agreement and you can click on this so that it will be downloaded in your machine okay so once it is downloaded you can just run that .exe file 
so it will automatically install files and java is ready in your machine okay right so once the java is ready your job is not yet done you have to set java home path in environment variables so let's see how to do that okay so go back to your um, c drive uh, this pc once you install java it will automatically be in program files so when you run the .exe file it will complete all the setup and then come to program files you will see java here go to java and go to this jdk and copy this path now so you can right click on your this pc or my computer if you are working on windows 7 okay and then click on properties and here select advanced system settings environment variables okay yeah here you go so these are the paths here you need to create a new path new say java underscore home and paste that path here okay and click on ok so I already have in my machine you can see it here java home I said that right so that's the one and you also go to jdk bin directory and copy this path again and then come back to your environment variables check for path variable yeah here it is so double click on that basically you can add one click on you and add that path here right and just just say okay so that bin path is also added here i already have so i don't add this maybe if you are working on windows 7 you might see something like this in this fashion so if you see in this fashion come to end give semicolon and add that path here control v okay that's it so two paths you need to add one is java home uh, this one and in the path variable you need to provide the bin path and then just say ok right that's it so java is successfully configured in your system and now your system knows where exactly java is located so that's the power of environment variables if you mention the path in environment variables and your system can easily identify the java location right let's come back so that concludes the step one downloading java and set java home and next and the most important download android studio okay so for that you need to go to this link or maybe tomorrow it changes so i would better prefer you to go to official website and check maybe you can say uh, download android studio and you see that developer.android.com if you hit on this link you will be navigated to this page yep here you need to hit this link to download android studio it's 1876 mb that's a huge data but you should have good wi-fi to download it okay so there's no other option for us it comes as whole bundle so once you download this android studio it might take a while based upon your internet speed so once it is downloaded and you will see something like this let me go to downloads and you would see this icon so double click this .exe file and it starts installing the files okay so it will take a while it might take up to 10 to 15 minutes to complete the installation so once it says the installation is completed and it will ask to click on finish with that android installation is completed in your machine okay it's very simple just go to their official website download this and run this .exe file that's it so it will take a while and you can just relax but in 10 to 15 minutes you will complete your installation so thereafter we need to find where exactly this is located okay for that first you need to check android installation path so once you know android is installed where it will located in our machine that's the tricky part 
so java will be directly in program files but android doesn't come in the program files it comes but not sdk so i'll explain you here so this whole studio comes into two parts one is android sdk okay so it comes as a two parts once you download android it's one sdk and another is as an android studio so we need to identify both those locations first of all let's go and see where exactly android sdk is stored okay let me go back to my explorer yeah you can see it here come to see users your name about your system name and from here there will be slash app data this app data may be in invisible mode okay so by default app data will not be displayed in your folder in the users in your specific folder just don't get panic go to your explorer and say slash app data you will be navigated to another folder okay by default app data will not be there in your machine of course you can make it to visible too right so in app data go to local and here you will find something called android and here is the sdk right so we need this sdk to run our mobile test and we need to configure that in our environment variables too okay so this is our sdk folder and if you go inside and these are the necessary folders which we need to run our android emulator okay android emulator is nothing but a virtual device where we run our mobile tests i'll show you in the coming lectures how it looks right so we need this path and we need to set that in our environment variables because our system need to know where exactly sdk location i mean sdk file is located so by default if it is in your machine your system cannot detect it you need to explicitly mention that in environment variables so that system identifies okay so just copy the path like this and go back to your environment variables again advanced system settings so here again let's create one more new system variable and say android home just like java home right and provide the path of that sdk that's it click on okay so i already have in my machine and this is my path android home so by default you will not see this folder in this path so you have to make some changes to see the tools folder so that you can give this path in your system variables okay so this folder is important we have this it have so many .exe files inside it so to make this folder visible in your folder so first of all come back to your android studio so on successful installation you will generally see that android studio .exe file in program files android android studio so this is where by default your android studio will get installed right so go to the bin directory and launch the studio because you need to make one setting and download this tools from this studio and then only that folder will be visible in your sdk folder okay so for the first time when you open this is how the window will open select any basic act activity or empty activity it's up to you because we are not going to create any project here so we just need to land on that landing page so that we can make some settings change so to move to that home page you have to either select any project from the templates and then you will land something like this so you have to wait until the build got finished okay so right now some loading is happening so hold on until everything is finished and then we need to open this tools folder right there is a menu option called tools right so there will be an option called sdk so right now it is not displaying here because the build is not yet finished so just give me one or two minutes i will pause this video until the build got finished and we will see the magic of options showing here all right you see that it's almost done and now when you 
select this menu option you will see this AVD manager and SDK manager. So I will soon come to this AVD manager concept but before that click on this SDK manager and then you have different options display here select SDK tools tab I told you right you need to have tools folder in your SDK folder okay so to make that folder visible there so come to this tab and uncheck this hide obsolete packages and then you will see one option called Android SDK tools select this checkbox and click apply okay so it will tell you that following components will be installed so make sure you have enough space accept the agreement and that's it so this will take some time to install those tools right so I'll pause the video until this download is done all right so installation is finished it clearly telling that now your SDK tools folder is present in Android SDK tools okay so come back and then you will see this folder okay so this is how you have to make this folder visible and then come to SDK tools and bin you need this location as well so copy this entire location tools bin and come back to your environment variables go to the path which we have seen in the previous lecture add the new path and copy it okay so you can see that I already have and apart from that let's have one more path yeah you can copy till here as well so wherever you see some kind of .exe files you can copy that so you have done two till now one is SDK and another is tools bin and you can also take up to here again copy this go back and paste it you see I do have that as well come down till tools and tools slash bin okay these are the two paths you need to add and that's it these two are enough so if you want you can also have that's not mandatory uh, platform tools yeah so that is not that necessary but just for the time being you can copy this and paste it here right I already have it so totally there are four system variables you need to mention one is Android home and another is platform tools and next till tools folder number three and bin number four you can see that all four I have in my machine so one is Android home and come on path two three and four that's it so you need those four system variables in your environmental so that your system detects all these .exe files and this is must if you miss doing that you may not invoke the necessary softwares in the later lectures okay so that's it with that you have successfully installed Android and set your environment variables path okay you see here set Android home to SDK location and include bin folders folder paths in path variable perfect so five points are done so as I said whole Android bundle comes into two parts one is SDK and another is Android Studio okay you also need Android Studio just to create all these virtual devices I let you know where exactly you need to use that but in general we will not use this tool much it's just to set up some basic infrastructure okay but testing purpose we will not use this Android Studio much but yeah you need that to do some configuration because you can set a virtual device Android emulator from the studio only okay now let's see where exactly this Android studio is located in our machine yeah so once you download everything you will see that in program files just like where you have seen Java remember see program files and this is the Java which we have seen in the previous lecture and now find out for Android 
yeah here it is so this folder will be automatically generated once you run the .exe file and complete the installation and go here Android Studio and bin directory and here if you are running on 64 bit the Studio 64 is the location so double click it to open so that Android Studio will be open for you so it might take a while to open okay again I'm just you know telling you up front so you need not panic again so it in my machine it take approximately 45 seconds now yeah now it started open so it it needed to install some stuff in the background so allow that to complete that and then Android studio will be invoked let's wait till that is open okay so we just need this to create a configure let me write here uh, virtual device just to not confuse where is it yeah so for the first time when you open you might not be seeing the screen what I am seeing now loading project it's loading some dummy project but for you on the first time when you launch it will ask you do you want to create a sample project or do you want to import the existing project you will have some different windows okay just click on the sample project and just say next 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 keep on clicking next okay so that you will be navigating to you know this kind of UI page to create sample project so basically Android Studio will not allow to use that features until you start creating project you know, that's a headache with this so we need to be serious in creating a project that's what Android Studio feels so we, you will have two windows open when you open for first time like import the project or create a basic project so select that basic and just say next next uh, don't worry about the content so finally after two to three minutes work you will be landing to this page okay so once you are here and once these toolbar is available for you you are good so because we just need these tools and Android tools from this icon that's it apart from that we will not use any Android studio okay yeah so once you reach this window here you need to configure virtual device so you need to create one virtual device so if you wonder why we need virtual device it's just to run our automated tests on that device okay so that you can visually see on the screen how the automation is happening okay so let's start creating virtual device in this lecture so go to the file if you have not already started new new project so just click on basic activity click on next and we are just again creating the base new project click on finish so trick here is if you want to open and create virtual device you can click on these tools but you see that right now it's not visible because you need to wait until the build is finished here so gradle sync started and you can see that two processes are running until unless all the processes completed running you will not see an option to create a virtual device okay so you have to wait you see that it's still going through some indexing resources perfect so once everything is done you will not see any process running here and you will also see that build is finished and then try to open tools again and now you see that AVD manager SDK manager these two options are displaying now okay so this is one of the common question I get from students they will not wait until all the process have been run here and waiting for a message build is finished and then when they try to open this they will not find this option but hang on wait for a few seconds once everything is done then click on this AVD manager what is AVD manager AVD stands for Android virtual device 
so if you are still wondering why we are using virtual device this is the place where you automate your appm test cases we create a device virtually on our machines and we deploy the app which we need to test on that device and we automate it using our appm tool perfect so when you click on that avd manager for the first time you will not see any devices here you are seeing this because i already created but when you start creating this for first time you will see empty window here so click on create virtual device and so this is the first screen it will ask you on what type of screen you want okay so select any one screen or mobile device for android and then click on next so basically it creates you a virtual device based upon the device you select here okay that particular size ratio and density based upon the selection what you made here so select anything click on next and now so these are the different system images basically android operating systems which you want to deploy into your device so these are different things available select any one of the android target 9 or 9 plus okay and then when you click on next this particular image that means this particular operating system will be installed in your virtual device so it have an option to download because right now we don't have any operating system of android present in your machine so simply click on download and that will help you to download the operating system and once it is done you can successfully use that operating system and click on next so which os to select it's up to you okay you can see the versions so right now we are somewhere on android 9 plus by the time you are watching this video you might see some android 14 or 15 because every month they release new versions so that really doesn't matter what version you use use whatever the latest is available okay so i'm just passing this video instead of waiting till 100% is done perfect it's done so click on finish so that that particular operating system is ready in your machine and you can use that in your virtual device click on next and you can give the any name to your avd so i can say rahul emulator something like that give one name but remember this name because with this name we will invoke this virtual device in our later lectures okay so this is the screen width dimensions pixel 2 and this is the operating system version and when you start you are saying that start in portrait mode now there is something called advanced settings so here you need not worry about much factors but if you want to change any hardware skin something like that you can do it here but i don't suggest you to change any of this setting okay so this looks good so we will quickly go back to hide advanced settings and click on finish and that will create you the new android virtual device that is rahul emulator so you can start that device by simply clicking on this play icon you can see that launch this avd in the emulator so select this icon and that will invoke virtual device in your machine let's see that you can read the console here starting avd and that's it the device is open um where it is here you go you see that it's booting up for the first time it might take some time to boot operating system in this avd give some time for this to load up and within one or two minutes you will see that everything is set on this emulator okay so this is how you can create android virtual device from android 
studio hang on um, it's trying to boot up you can see that there is one screen one line it's representing that loading all the operating system into the simulator now so going forward if you want to open this emulator either you can open this android studio come to the tools click on this avd manager and you can simply start it from here this is one way and also android guys have given us some commands where you can start this emulator directly from your command prompt you need not open android studio every time okay because this will consume some memory in your machine so opening virtual device itself becomes your system little slow because you are booting up another complete whole mobile in your system right so ram takes that effort and that makes your system slow so you can open this emulator from command prompt as well so let me show that how to do this meanwhile emulator also booted up you can see that it's just the same what you can see in your android mobile okay so we have simultized everything as a virtual device and we will deploy the apps into this device and we will try to automate them so that's the idea okay so now remember the names of devices you created in my case it's emulator hyphen triple five four and rahul emulator these are the two different emulators i have in my machine okay so now close everything close your emulator close your android studio and now go back to the command prompt from command prompt with a command we can also invoke the emulator so whenever you want to do automation with appium as i said you need not open android studio every time first time it is mandatory to create virtual device there is no other option but once you create virtual device thereafter you need not open the studio you can directly do it from command prompt if there is something wrong with commands then feel free to open the android studio and then open your emulator okay now go to your android sdk installation let me take you there as you know that android studio sdk specific sdk will be stored in the app data this app data may be in invisible mode in all of our systems so go to this specific url box and type this app data after your system name and then you will be navigated here so click local and then android sdk and then you have a folder called emulator so this is the .exe file which help us to invoke that specific emulator here virtual device and emulator both are same don't confuse in android terminology um, it will say virtual device which is nothing but avd and it may also say as emulator okay both refers to same so do not confuse on that first go to that path wherever the emulator directory is present in your system thereafter you need to provide this command emulator and what is that virtual device name avd okay avd stands for android virtual device and you need to give that virtual device name okay so whatever you created so i have two virtual devices in my machine one is emulator hyphen triple five four and the rahul emulator which i just created so if i want to open this emulator hyphen triple five four so give the command emulator hyphen ad space give the name of your emulator that's it click enter and that will open you will get this message that hacks is working and you see that the device is open so this is one way and here we did not interact with android studio at all okay you can close this and you can again close the simulator 
and if you want to open it again emulator avd and the name of your emulator uh, spelling mistake for the first time it might take some time in your machines to load thereafter it will be fast okay so this is how you can open your android virtual device these are the different methods available it's up to you which one you choose so we will start with downloading node.js so you might be wondered to download appium why i need node.js so appium is a comes as a node module okay so if you want to get node module into your machine you need to have node.js software right so node is world in itself and you see that angular js all those are you know node modules in the same way even appium comes as a specific node module and to use that appium in our machines first of all as a prerequisite we need to have that node.js software just like a java how we have if you want to work on android and eclipse because they run on java machine at the same time uh, if you want to work on with this appium you need node.js okay so let's go and say download node.js go to their official site and yep if you are working on 64 you can download this if it's in 32 this okay and once you download you can run that the dot msi file and click on next next it will take a while and complete node installation in your machine so once installation is completed you can find that node.js module in your program files let me show you it's just like when you see java and android studio see program files and once you click on finish button with that node.js installation uh, yeah here you go node.js okay so yes we have successfully downloaded node.js and now we need to set environment variables path just like how we have done for java copy this path go back to again system settings environment variables create a system new system variable saying node underscore home and give that path you see that i already have in my machine right and apart from that you also need few other files let me show you node modules npm and bin yeah you need to have this as well npm so what is npm here you need to know the difference between node and npm so node is a software in that node you have a command line installer called npm so with this npm you can download any node module now appium is one node module angular js is one node module protractor that is for you know uh, just like selenium but for angular js web application and that is one node module so there are different node modules available over the net which are widely used across the globe okay so if you want to download all those node module you can download via npm only i'll tell you how to download appium with this npm okay so in node modules go to npm go to bin folder copy this path and place it in your path folder so just follow my lectures you will understand when i start downloading appium okay the real usage of this npm okay for now just accept it uh, go to path folder and create a new and add that npm slash pin this is must you need to add this i already have in my machine okay so let me uh, click on okay uh, click on okay right now go back to your word document you see that we have successfully set node home by going till this path and we have also set npm environment variables path by just going to the bin 
right all set now go and download the appium so as i said in the when i when i'm explaining architecture appium comes as a two packages one is client appium client and another is appium server okay so appium client in the sense you can write your appium code in multiple languages so if you watch my initial lectures when i'm talking about capabilities of appium you can write it in java javascript python c sharp ruby okay so it's up to you you can code in any language that specific using that appium api so that jars which support your language is called appium client now for example all this tutorial runs on appium java client okay you use java apm to talk to your mobile test cases so that is client jars so if you work on c sharp you need to say appium c sharp client jars so it's up to you in what language you write your test cases you need to have that specific client jars so we need appium client jars appium java client jars and that is a client side at server side you need you need to have an appium server which is common across any client okay appium server is a unique and one thing which actually listen to your client code so when you write your java code here and hit and run and ask you to execute that this client will communicate with your appium server and then execute test cases in your mobile that's how internal architecture works you need to send the code from your client side and from your editor tools maybe then eclipse and then code goes to the server and server interprets your code and then triggers the execution in mobile devices so that's the reason appium comes into two different components appium server appium client so when you run your test with appium java code so it should send to server right so so server to listen to your client it sh it should start we should download that appium server in our machine and we need to start that appium server then only whenever you execute something code server is ready to listen if you download and if you don't start your server when you are working for your appium test there's you know there's no execution because server is not is not listening to your tests so appium server invocation is the mandatory and the first before you want to run the test okay so theoretically it looks some difficult but when you start working practical it's very easy you can simply start the server with one click okay and then run your tests that's all so why i'm explaining this concept means now we need to download server separately and client separately in our machine okay maybe i i used to get lot of mails from my students asking so i already downloaded appium why again we are downloading again okay that's why you know in my next lectures this is the remake of the previous lectures okay so i want to now clearly differentiate between client and server here we need to have it separately so my earlier lectures are on appium 1.1 1, .1, one year back now they are updated so even i updated my lectures with all the latest installation so there is no android studio when i start teaching appium it just come as sdk folder and now they have provided us neat ui to you know create virtual device earlier you know there used to be lot of commands from command line it's a big work now they made it very easy okay hopefully they'll make more and more easy in the future right now let's go and download appium server first so this appium server comes as a node module okay this is a node module so node modules can be downloaded via npm only so let's go back to our command prompt and let me create one more so how to download appium in your machine so you can down first of all note down this point so just to avoid confusion for you you can download any node module only using npm npm is a command line tool you can google it what is npm it's a command line installer which helps to install all your node modules so appium is node module let me download it with the command npm 
install hyphen g appm yeah so you need to say npm install hyphen g in the sense installing it globally in your system right so we are just asking our npm to go and get me the appm that's it this npm is responsible to connect to the server node server and check for this appm node module and it downloads into your machine so all that npm takes care we need not very like where exactly it is located and from which site you need to download okay for example in the previous lectures if you want to download android home we we went to their official site we brought that we clicked .exe file no it's a long process right but that made easy when when it is a node module okay with npm you can simply say npm and go and install appm that's it you need not worry what happened at back end but ultimately once the installation is completed appm will be in your system that's the beauty of npm and the node module right let me hit an enter so it takes a while to download probably 2 to 3 minutes i guess based upon your internet speed and your ram configuration so be patient okay so it takes time to install it's still running so maybe for the first time it might take i just uninstalled yesterday to demo again how to install it freshly so just be cautious and patient till it get installed probably it might take 4 to 5 minutes it's up to them so let me pass this video i don't want to just waste the time waiting for that so once installation is complete i'll resume it again okay you see that installation started it's extracting all the files you can see that into that node module right it's done so it successfully installed all the dependencies which is needed to run appm server in your machine you can see that so it took me 5 to 7 minutes to complete maybe in the same in your case when you are working okay so these are all the dependencies you need to run that appm server right so once the entire appm is downloaded so now you can start the server simply by typing the word appm and hit an enter and that's it appm server will start immediately you can see that with this message you can confirm that appm server is successfully started in your machine now you might be wondered that you have given this word from some random path but still it identified where exactly appm is present in your machine and it started the server so the reason behind that is while installing you have given like this g stands for global keyword as i said this is helping us to identify this appm in your system anyway wherever you install when you make it with hyphen g global that is applicable to every path of your system so that's the reason you can simply provide this appm word and that's it you can start the server it's very easy right so once you install going forward when you want to practice just open the command prompt and hit this word that's it wherever it is installed it will go there and it will start your server you can simply confirm by reading this message called welcome to appm and if you want to stop the server click on control c and then you will get like this terminate bad job select y and hit an enter so that your server is now stopped you can restart again by just typing this word called appm and your server will start again okay so this is how you can install appm and start the appm server okay so let's do the final steps 13 14 in this lecture and can wrap the entire installation so let's get the java client library so you can go to um, and just say download appm so you can hit on first link and these are the client libraries i told you right appm client libraries okay select the java and it prompted to maven website so from here you can download the jar 
just click on this download icon and say jar and that will helps us to download this java client jar in our machine and this is client side java jar which you need to support your apm methods and you need to import that into your project that's all this can be done with just one simple click now let's go and download eclipse which is an editor to write all our code and now you need to create a project here okay let's create the project um, right click new project and then click on java project because we are going to use java client libraries of appium right so click on java project say next and you can say uh, you can say tutorial some random name to create a project okay click on next and say finish so this is the project we created so in this project we are going to write our test cases so how do you write a test case for that you need to create one java class so in that class we will actually write our appium code so let me create a java class in the source folder right click new class and you can simply say some base and select this public static void main so that by default it gives you that java template and that's it here is the where you need to write your appium code okay so this editor supports the appium ex execution so you just need to create one project and in that project just create one class it's nothing but a test case so just see in terms of testing terminologies class can be treated as a test case and project name can be treated as test suit so here we are in tutorial test suit and base is our test case so in this test case we will write our appium code which satisfy the requirement of this base test case okay but so if you write appium code will this eclipse recognizes it no because it doesn't have knowledge of appium right it's simply plain java class but how would it identify appium java client libraries so this tutorial project need to have knowledge of java appium client libraries then only if you start writing your appium code this project can recognize and execute now we know where integrated our appium jars into this project okay so that's the reason to whatever the code you write system will not execute first of all you need to provide that knowledge to this project you can do that by configuring our jar which we downloaded appium client jar okay into this project you can do that simply by right click on a project properties select java build path and in the libraries path say add external jars select the java client jar which you have just downloaded click on open and that's it click on okay and now this project have knowledge of your appium code because we have brought that jar and configured into this project right apart from this api client libraries we also need selenium jars so you might be wondered selenium is for web right why do we need it for mobile yeah but still there are some web elements handling in mobile as well so for example when you are dealing with mobile app sometimes it connects to web app at that time if you already have selenium jars in your project then you can you know, those jars support us to continue execution without any halt okay so just make sure you also have selenium jars in your build path not only appium so you are working for mobile apps you may also need that web apps okay it's because sometime if you find an element with xpath css selector even in mobile so selenium apis are more strong and even those supports mobile also so not that consistent like appium so better if you have those jars as well in our project so let's go and get the selenium jars as well just like how we got appium java client libraries just say selenium download and go to their official website 
as we are dealing with Java client on front end side for Appium so just go here and click on the download these are different languages available for Selenium to automate you can automate your Selenium with C Sharp, Ruby, Python just like how can Appium does with different languages as we are interested and this course is specifically taught on Java just go and download Java specific Selenium jars okay you need to unzip them once you download into your machine I have already have the unzipped folder so I am not doing it so you can unzip it with your favorite uh, zip software like WinZip or 7zip alright so now let's go back to our Eclipse and we will import selenium jars as well just like how we have imported appium java client libraries okay so let me i deleted appium java client again let me install it freshly so this is the java client the appium one click on open and then again click on add external jars because this time you want to import another set of jars which is nothing but selenium so you should see selenium java give me a second yeah here it is so open this first of all there are two jars in this folder import them carefully and again click on add external jars because there are few more jars in this lips directory as well so open this folder select all these jars and that's it hit on this apply and close your tutorial project is more powerful because it have a knowledge of appium mobile as well as selenium web now so whatever code you write now will be executed by the eclipse because you have provided sufficient information regarding those charts okay so that concludes our setup so from the next lecture, we can directly start hitting and writing our first basic program on IPM. Okay, it's done. There's nothing more. So I think we have probably taken one more end of forward to wrap up everything. So let's go and reback if you have done all the correct. We have Java with us. We have Android Studio. We downloaded that and it given us in two separate folders. We have set Android home environment variables in SDK location. We have open studio and configured this device okay and then we have also made sure our emulator is working and from command prompt also i have given a command right once everything is done android setup is completed with infrastructure we switched to node.js and got our appium server from node and you can see how it is listening and we also brought client libraries and you may also say download java and selenium we need both so we got also client libraries, we downloaded Eclipse to write our code, we have successfully created a project and configured Appium libraries into it and we also started Appium server with just Appium command. So that's pretty much about installation and setting up infrastructure in our machine. Right, so now let's start writing our code. First of all, let me explain from where we need to start when we are building the code for mobile automation test cases. The first is you need to talk to your Appium server and then Appium server invokes your virtual devices or real devices whatever it may be which are connected. So firstly to that information you need to pass from your client code to your server code. Yeah. If you see that Appium server is started and it is listening at 4723 port. Now you need to send the information to this server and Appium server interprets that information. Okay. Now my you know requirement is my desired information. I will say my desired capabilities. So what are the capabilities I am expecting my Appium to launch? Okay, that is my desired, so which I like. The name itself says. So I want to open an emulator 
I'm going to open Rahul emulator because my name of my emulator is Rahul emulator if you go and check here you see that Rahul emulator okay so I am working on this so when you are creating your virtual device I, I told you right how to give a name for it so whatever the name you have given for that emulator will display here so you can use that your emulator to launch okay so and testing should happen in that emulator that is my first you know, desired capability and next I want to test one a one app maybe some XYZ app I am going to test so initially that app might not be in your emulator because at the first time emulator comes as a brand new right with few of the built-in apps so you want to tell I want to let install this app in this emulator so that I can test it so these are the basic information you need to pass so so that server knows where exactly which emulator to invoke okay right so let's say there is one iOS em, uh, simulator is open and one Android emulator is open at the same time in your system and when you talk to IBM server to invoke it definitely confuses if you don't provide this information okay first of all it listens what are the active devices right now connected to my system so if there are two devices and it do not know to what device to it to, it should root to test so from your code you need to clearly tell that open go and work on this specific emulator and next it cannot directly start testing it should invoke that app in that emulator so you need to also tell what app you need to invoke so that once it invokes then you can start testing okay so these two information you need to pass so earlier in earlier releases there is one more capability which you need to also pass like which platform you need to work like android or ios okay but the latest releases that step was depreciated so internally they are taking care okay so earlier there was no that mechanism so you need to tell to your appm server on are you working on android or you want to execute this test on ios even that information you need to pass but thanks to them they made our work very minimal by asking us to provide these two information and and thereafter one more important information which you need to pass from your code is first of all you need to talk to your appm server right so how do you connect yourself to your appm server that's the question okay so that's all fine without that these are the two information we need to pass to our appm server that's fair enough but first of all how do you connect yourself to server and then you can pass this information so you need to also write one connection step to connect yourself to that server right so once you write these three steps and hit in your from client side it goes and first of all connects you to server and thereafter it opens it gives this information to server so that server opens the emulator and invokes that app so after this whatever you code you write that will be executed on your emulator for that specific app this is the concept this is how it works internally right now and this code this template is common for every test case so whatever the mobile test case you write in a separate class so you need to pass all this information okay you need to tell what is the emulator what is the app connection to server and this is the common template for every test case maybe if you write all those test cases in single file it might not require but if you maintain separate files for each and every file you need to pass this information okay and before you do this make sure you were I mean before you run this test these are the prerequisites make sure you are um, RPM server is started I'll give again need documentation from resources tab I'm just giving a rough now make sure your RPM server is started before you invoke this test see all these are a one-time efforts so once you have done this thereafter you will you need not again reinvent for every test you can just copy paste I'll show you how can we do that
in the later lectures okay so you need to make sure your rpm server is started and you need to also make sure on what emulator you are working that should be open okay so when you hit this execution server will try to identify this emulators okay that should be open if not it will say emulator is switched off and i cannot work on it okay make sure your emulator is open that's it you need these two conditions to be satisfied before you hit this test case okay we are we did not actually start automating the code this comes at here okay before that step one make sure server is started and go to your command prompt if it is not started just hit appium and wait till you see this message welcome to appium and it is listening on this port number so that means server is started and at the same time make sure your emulator is open okay i am working on android 7.1.1 .1 as i shown in my previous lecture when i'm working on virtual device even you can use the same emulator it's up to you yeah so both these are open and now okay then step one is completed let's start building the step two so how do you pass this information from the test let's see that okay go to your document and say desired capabilities we need to create an object there is a class called desired capabilities which actually takes the information in json structure and gives that information to the server okay this desired capabilities class can do all this stuff and we are interested to complete this thing right we need to gather all the information and send it to server our capabilities for that appium and selenium guys have uh, created one class called desired capabilities where we can pass the information from this object and send it to server okay so move your mouse onto this and you will get some suggestions for importing package and you can see selenium dot remote you see that this package actually we are importing from selenium so that's the reason i asked to import selenium jars as well perfect error is gone now cap dot this is an object right i just created an object so with that object i would start cap dot and you will get all the methods related to that and we need this one set capability okay so in this we are setting now capability the first capability what we need here um, emulator right so you need to pass capability name in that value I am pretty sure value is Rahul emulator because we are passing the emulator information. But what is the capability name for this? It's mobile capability type. Type this and say dot and check for emulator. Seconds, just check dot device name. Yeah. This is the one. So we need the device name, right? Perfect. You see that? So we have successfully added this capability. So we are saying, I need a device name called Rahul emulator to open so that I can work on it. So you can send this information, right? Next, cap dot again set capability and what next we have this is done we need to send the app information right which to be invoked same thing you can copy this mobile capability type and set dot see these are the different capabilities you can send from your client to your appium server there are lots of things but all these are optional so for you to basic for script to execute you just need device name as well as the app okay you can also pass appium version which appium version to run 
okay for example there are three servers open in your machine like this server version is 1.6.3 and you can also download one more version and open that version 1.6.4 so from your system how do you ask to connect to specific version you can say dot apm version connect to 1.6.4 server okay but in general let's stick with only one version in your system okay so and when you are working with browsers you can use browser underscore name on which browser you need to invoke so right now we are only working on native apps so i'm sticking to app if you are working on mobile browser you can see browser name you can hit that which we'll see in our next sections okay so all these are and you can say which orientation with which orientation you should start your emulator if it is in part uh, landscape or portrait okay and platform name platform version so but and for as apm guys minimized it they just have done a fix and from this version it's just two desired capabilities enough for you to invoke app okay so dot app and here you need to provide that specific app path where exactly it's located right so you can simply copy paste the location where exactly you place the app but better to write in a perfect coding standards so first of all let's copy and bring that app into you know this path okay let's bring that app into our project and we can copy that path into here yep so let's get the app from my other folder apm space tutorial source yeah here it is copy and i'll copy it here in the source folder perfect now i have my app here so which we the app name is API demos, which we will be using in our next lectures to test and understand the mobile automation from this app. Because this app was officially provided by APM guys. It has lot of lot uh, UI functions, you know, which it's a good practice for us to, you know, start with. Because, you know, uh, if you want to scroll down, if you want to swipe, if you want to zoom and if you want to what else the native events we have in mobile as the mobile gestures uh, if you want to specifically long press if you want to open the right click or context menu so there are a lot of mobile gestures available for you and we will see all of them in our coming lectures and this app supports all of those gestures so this was a perfect example to pick and to teach because i have taken a lot of apps but few apps doesn't have few gestures to explain and few apps missing some other gestures but this api demos app have everything so this was the best example for you to explain all the topics so that's why i have picked this if you want to see that api demos app in my emulator if you see that api demos yeah this is the app so you can see how to handle with media, graphics, preferences, views. You know, there are a lot of things to explore, which we'll be seeing in our coming lectures. Okay. So this is the app which I need to install and invoke in my Rahul emulator. Right. You can simply right click on it. Go to properties and pass this path exactly into this so that, you know, we are exactly showing that where the path is located but as per coding standards we cannot directly hard code the entire apk path so better way of doing it is using a file method in java it's nothing uh, weird thing all this is all one time effort okay if you write this one time and in every test you can simply copy paste you need not reinvent the wheel all the time by defining these capabilities okay import file java dot so file fs let me complete this two steps and explain you uh, fs copy this refactor okay 
perfect now so what i am saying go to source folder first okay so that i have taken that into f object so in source folder again i am asking go to the specific path i mean that specific name of that apk and i am storing that entire path into fs variable and here i would simply say fs dot get me the absolute path that's it so in this way you can avoid hard coding of writing paths here so that you can take this project and place it in any system it will work okay but rather than that if you hard code saying c users rahul something like that and if you take this project into another machine and they will not have rahul folder right it definitely fails so that's the reason we are using file method file class in java where first of all we are going to that specific source folder and from thereafter we are pulling out that file name from that source folder and we are assigning it to object fs and i am calling this entire path with fs dot get absolute path and this is the best way of handling it because when you are working in real time there might be more than four to five people working on this automation and if you have created a test with your local path and if you push into your git or svn and if someone takes the code and that doesn't work for them because it's in your local right when you say user slash rahul and his name may, might be different and that doesn't work but in this manner it works in any system so that's the best practice of giving the absolute path right so let's go back to our document we have showed our rpm server started emulator is open we have sent a desired capability of opening emulator and we have also set app information okay that's what i told that where exactly app is located so that my server picks the app from here and go and installs it, it in this emulator right so the last step which is left is connection to the server now so first of all to send a connection to server you need to create and invoke an android driver class as you are working with android driver you need to use android so when you are working with ios you will use ios here android driver a t let me create and explain you so this is how first we create a basic driver for android that is ad move your mouse here and import appium.java client android okay so here it was saying that you need to send some parameters so in this driver method driver i can let me write driver here okay so this driver object helps us to automate all our tests okay and from the next step maybe if you want to automate each and every test scenario in the app you will do with the help of driver object because this driver object have capability of handling android os but in this you need to send two arguments to this class first argument is connection to server link and next when you are sending connection to the server at the same time send this capabilities entire capabilities you need to send to server right now this cap object have these two capabilities if you see cap dot set capability cap dot set capability so this object stores cap object stores all this information so that you can now simply send cap object that's it so server will retrieve this object and get that all the information okay so you need to send these two parameters so to server we would only this step goes only this one step will be connected from your entire test to form a connection so in this step itself as a first argument you have connection to server so that it connects in this step itself you have second argument called cap object and it will open the cap object and gets all these capabilities and then it invokes in the mobile okay and in this step itself you have driver object which is responsible for executing your test cases from the next step okay so this was the key step in your apm test case so all these steps we have written to just send as an object for this step right and here you need to pass server link so that can be done uh, let me copy paste it here yeah 
so there is a url class where you can pass the entire string so you might be wondered from where exactly i got this ip address so server is staying at this specific ip address so i'm asking to ping here if you go back to your server it says i am listening on 4723 port 4723 port 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. that's nothing but your local host in your local machine it's listening on 4723 okay that local host ip address is 127.0.0.1 so that is common to every windows machine okay not only windows machine any machine any network machine have their local host as 127.0.0.1 not only in my machine it's in every machine so that's how their ip address runs so if you are familiar with networking you will understand that okay so we know that it's in our local host so this is our ip address for every local host in every machine so i have given that instead of four zeros and 4723 is the port where appm is listening so colon 4723 and this is like web driver wd web driver hub so that is where we are actually invoking and setting up our connection to our appm server that's it so this is the step you need to write there are some errors in the step let's fix that firstly move your mouse into that url and import this java.net okay people confuse and import the first one all the time and they keep on saying that we are not able to run the test so please use the second one okay and then you will get one more error like this move your mouse again and say add throws declaration perfect now there is some yellow line here warnings let's see that okay so from the latest version it is expecting to have some you know references you can say like this I'm going to work on Android elements, right? Android element. Again, you can import this import Android element, and same thing you can do here. Perfect. So the error is gone. So, what all we have learned from this lecture? The single step does everything. We need to work on our Android OS, so I have created Android driver class. In that class, I need to send two arguments. One argument to form a connection to my server. I know that my server is listening at 4723 port in localhost. So same thing I have given here. Localhost IP address colon 4723 so slash wd slash hub, which actually connects to my server. Right. First argument connected to server. After forming connection, I need to send all these desired capabilities so my server have a knowledge to like what emulator to invoke and what app it needs to work. That knowledge, I have used capabilities class and have thrown entirely entire information into cap object and I am passing that cap object so that it opens and get this information. That's it. That's what we need to do. So why can't we run at this test case and see whether the app is invoked or not? Right, let's run this test case. Okay, just before that, make sure your Appium server is started. Yeah, and then your emulator is open. Perfect. Now, right click, run as and say Java application. Okay, so you can quickly open the logs to check what's happening. And you see here a app will open in this emulator and you can see the logs you see that api demos app is open it just got invoked congratulations we have successfully invoked an app with the help of appium okay so you see that 200 which is a success and these all are the logs and make a habit of watching the logs and find out the actual you know error or success okay so the log says everything if something goes wrong by seeing the logs you can understand where exactly the problem is okay so that's how you can start your testing you know this is the first step to begin with 
So see that I told you right initially infrastructure setup is the only hurdle in Appium. So thereafter from next lecture it's just a cakewalk. You know we have taken up to two to two and a half hours to reach this point. Starting from a blank installation, uh, we do not have anything in our machine. We got SDK, we got emulators. The infrastructure took itself one, one and a half hour for us. And thereafter, we need to know what about this capabilities, how to form connection, how to open the server. So finally, once everything is set up in our machine, we were able to invoke an app in our emulator, which is our first success stone. Okay. Now, I need to tell you some tips before you start with uh, testing. Here, you need to, once you run the test, it says script is completed and execution is done with the 200 status. Okay, that's point number one. Thereafter, connection is not immediately closed. It will take some time to close the connection. Now, you see that it will wait at least 60 seconds to close the connection. If you run, if you try to run the test again before the 60 seconds of finishing the previous test, it fails saying connection is already opened in another test. It will give you that error. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to wait 60 seconds before you run another test. So if you don't want to wait for 60 seconds, if you want to quickly run another test, you need to close that connection. So how do you do that? So before that just read out the commands here we have done till here our test is completed and after 60 seconds shutting down because we waited 60 seconds for a command okay you need to wait one minute before appium shuts down and then it's shutting down android driver it closed the session okay so once the session is closed you can start working again but if you don't want to wait 60 seconds till that session is closed you can forcibly stop the connection and start the connection again right don't confuse between the words connection and session i need to give this tip before you begin because you know, people will face problem in running the test so once the test is completed this session takes 60 minutes oh sorry 60 seconds to close so once after session is closed, you need not start the server again. Just a session is closed, but connection is still open. You can run your test. But if you don't want to wait the 60 seconds and you want to run the test again, you need to forcibly close the connection, RPM connection, and then start it again. So let's say we are in scenario one. Here I have waited for 60 seconds in explaining the concept. So it finally closed that session and you can see that moving to state stop the connect uh, the specific session is closed and you can run the test again without tweaking anything here. But in the before 60 seconds if you want to do hit control C to close the connection. Okay. And you will get something like this receive sign it shutting down terminate bad job save Y and hit an enter so that appium connection is fully closed now start the connection again with the appium command hit an enter yeah you see that and now again new connection is open so just keep this step and once you hit an enter it will not quickly open that specific appium server it might take some 15 to 20 seconds to open this okay based upon the system ram and everything and when you start testing and if you still if you hit this run as java application and if you don't see any logs here and if it is hanged to this point just click on enter and see so that program begins so all these are little bugs here out the here out and there for this version maybe they'll fix in the later okay these two are not the bugs these are what they set a general default timeout okay so but programmatically you can start this server and you can close it okay right now manually you are starting the server and you are closing it right you can do it programmatically but i would 
tell you that all this in a later sections okay again that involves a little code i don't want to you know mess up everything in single shot so first of all let's learn some apm let's learn some automation and if you see something is automating in apps we will get some confidence so thereafter we can slowly come back and i will explain how to start and stop apm programmatically okay so we need you know some kind of encouragement and confidence and that we will definitely get if we start automating something right so from the next lecture we will actually look into those parts so right now we are in this place api demos this got invoked and now from here i want to click on something and we need to swipe we need to scroll so all those we will start it from our next lecture so now we begin with one two learning that is android UI automator now my purpose is to click on this link or scroll down so whatever it is first of all if I want to click on something here I need to know object of it right if you are familiar with selenium we have a tools called firebug fire in firefox and inspector tools in chrome and internet explorer to identify the objects of this all the UI options okay so if i want to click here let's say on preference i need to know the object of this preference so how do i get object of this preference so in web we have a specific tools to do that but in mobile how can we get that so that's an interesting question so for that android guys have came up with tool called ui automator tool from that you can actually get the objects of all these now in this lecture let's try to get the objects of these options with the help of that tool so where exactly that tool lies let me show you go to your sdk path slash app data uh, okay sdk right so in sdk go to tools folder and bin and you will see it here ui automator viewer okay just hit this link first of all one window prompt will open like this thereafter within 5 to 10 seconds you should see the ui automator viewer invocation here you go so this is the tool which helps us to identify the objects in our mobile app so how to do that now i want to get the objects of all these for that first of all you need to take hit this link which takes the screenshot of this app okay make sure that your mobile is open before you invoke this ui automator viewer okay so if you invoke this first and then next you might not see the properties properly so as per my experience you need to open emulator first and thereafter ui automator viewer now if you want to objects of this page if you hit this link it takes the screenshot of entire your device and it gives the objects of it let me do that you see that obtaining device screenshot and here you go so these screenshot whatever you are seeing here is replicated in this ui automata viewer and observe it if i hit any object here so all the objects, properties, attributes related to that specific OS button are displayed here like index, text, ID, class name, package and at the same time you can see how that XML hierarchy is displayed. You can see that view as well like text view. If you hit on NFC you see that it changes. If I hit on hardware it moves up and it displays all the details related to that hardware. So basically, if you want to click on any object in mobile app or if you want to perform any operation on specific UI icon, you need details of that UI icon. Okay, with that details only, you can click on it. Now, for example, if I want to click on app, so I need the details of that app so that I will pass those details in my script, which you will be learning in the next lectures. Okay, by passing the details in that app and I will say to click on it. Okay, to get the details, we are using this UI Automator Viewer. So with this tool, if you spy on any object here, you will actually get all the details about that object here. 
like what is the text what is the id given by developer for this hardware what is the class given by the developer for this hardware so we need all these details for our automation okay so without these details we cannot automate that's pretty sure right we need those attributes so that we will pass that in our script and try to click on these links so to get these details we are using ui automator viewer so in our every test to identify every step of automation we will be keep on depending on this ui automator viewer to get the object details okay so this was the tool which we use in general when we are working with firefox for web automation we have a tools like uh, firebug firepath and developer tools even in chrome in chrome to identify the objects for automation we have right click you have inspector tools if you work with a tool called qtp and they even have one uh, window to identify all these objects okay they say it as object identification window at the same time if someone ask how can you do that in appm with android you can say that with the help of ui automator viewer okay so this you need that before you start the steps okay and thereafter so this is the one and let's go back to our code and i told you that for every test case these are the common for at least next uh, 6 to 10 lectures probably i'm not sure based upon you know our wavelength our understanding that might take up to 10 lectures so up to 10 lectures at least i will be using this api demos app to explain all the concepts of appm okay so for all those steps for all those test cases opening an app and emulator connecting these are common steps right so what i'll do i'll place it in base class and i'll create separate test for all my appm test cases and i will you know call this function there okay so that i don't want to write for every test case rather than duplicating i'll call this function in a in every my test with a single step so that you know it's easy for us to avoid this writing all the time so let's do that in this session before you know we begin with automation let's actually wrap it up in separate function and use it right so let's write that in function rather than public static void main um static capabilities okay so move your mouse here set return type to void and add throws declaration basically i'm wrapping all these steps into a function and in my every test from the next class when i start doing for example in my next class i'll start on automating one end to end scenario or clicking on this link and some validations so however i need to call this all that these steps before i do that so rather than i'm writing every time i'll wrap it up in one function and from in the next test i will just call this capabilities method that's it so i can avoid the duplication of work and time as well so in the capabilities method it actually sets file name capabilities and then i need to return this object i will say return driver that's it and move your mouse because you need to change the method return type to android because when you are writing driver you need to set return type to this because this return type data type is this one right so same you need to set it here okay we have one base class in that base class we have one capabilities method right which actually does everything now let's start with our one more test class here which we do actual automation here we'll start with the basics of you know identifying an objects with the help of ui automator base six yeah so if i want to create one more test rather than again copying all those stuff i can simply first of all inherit the properties from this base class i can do that with the help of extends keyword okay so with the help of extends keyword i can actually use the methods defined in the base class into my basics class so more about this you can learn in my core java tutorial which you will find at the end of this course 
At the end of this course, you have separate dedicated section explaining core Java concepts. Okay, but for now, please don't go there. Let's continue the rhythm. Only in this single lecture, you will see this kind of related Java because I am reusing the stuff. But for next lecture, you will not come across any core Java stuff. Okay, just don't waste your time again to switching Java. Let's keep momentum going. So if you have not heard about inheritance in your life till now, I'm just going to explain what it is. So with the help of extends keyword, whatever the methods defined in this class, you can reuse in this class if you use this keyword. That's it. And that we say as inheritance, inheriting the properties and methods of parent class to child class. Perfect. Now, so now you can just call capabilities method. Okay, so move your mouse and say change to capabilities, the method name uh, and add throws declaration. Yeah. So what does, oops, sorry. Yeah, here in our capabilities method, we are returning this driver object because as I said in my previous lecture, this driver object is responsible for all your automation. Okay, so when you have defined all these steps and you have defined driver method, make sure you send this driver object to your basics class. Okay, so if you don't send this, there's no point of writing that in separate function. We need driver object here to continue our execution from this a specific point. Okay, this step will reach us to till this point. Okay, from here after you need a driver object. So that driver object we already having defined here right so we are just returning it so this method will actually return the capabilities nothing but driver so I'll assign it to driver yeah so in Java you cannot leave any variable blank without defining so for the first time you are defining driver object into this class right you need to tell this class what is the data type of this driver go back to your capabilities method carefully and see what is the data type this is the data type right copy it come back and give it here that's it so you are all set okay now run this test it will again invoke all the steps which are present in this capabilities okay it basically executes this capabilities method so what we have in capabilities we have till the method invocation that app invocation we have right and that executes in this basics as well now you see that I have avoided all those code in my next class by just calling that specific method so hereafter I can start directly with driver dot and the appm related code to automate my stuff I need not worry about that all desired capabilities all server apks and everything I will carefully define for single time all these and I will keep on inheriting and using in my every test case. Okay, till I use uh, the specific emulator and specific APK, I'll just call this step in my every test case. Okay, so now if you run this test, let's see what happens. Okay, make sure your server is on. Okay, so run as Java application, click on OK you see that it's running let me go back if you see see that AP, api demos got invoked with success 200 result and i don't have any step here just because i call this method that's it so we are all set we know how to get android ui automator objects also in our next lecture i'll take one end to end test case a scenario like how to click on preferences, how to click on that link and how to go to at the end page. Okay, there is some set of scenarios for every lecture. We will pick one test case end to end scenarios and we will automate it like that. We will learn you know, all APM related concepts with this API. And one more thing. Uh, so once these lectures are done from next lecture, count on till 10 to 12 lectures. So once those are completed, you are good to start, you know, updating your resume because, you know, you need not wait till you complete the course. You can start when you are parallel running with course because you know all the basics, right? 
by the completion of 50% of course you will be knowing how does appium work what how does it invoke and what are the methods you use okay at the same time you can actually update your resume with the appium skills which you are keep on learning okay just don't wait till you finish the course completely so if you want any inputs in resume as well please drop me an email i have good resumes on appium template like how to put all those in the project i can give you so that you know you can use that in your resume so all the resume inputs which i am giving will be related to this course so it's easy to you for you know a compare and use that skill in your resume so that if someone ask a question on that you can clearly answer right so if you want anything that you can email to this gmail address okay that's pretty much and we'll meet in the next lecture with a sample test case and we'll take from there okay thank you